Gastroesophageal reflux disease can leave you with persistent acid reflux. In this video, I'll review the best ways to manage your symptoms. I'll be covering everything from lifestyle, dietary modification, plus medications your doctor can prescribe. Welcome to JHP Medical, I'm Dr. Hart Pinto, and I'll be reviewing the management of your gastroesophageal reflux disease. Previously, we've discussed the common symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease and how your doctor can diagnose it. If GERD is a new diagnosis for you, it'd be a good idea to review this video linked here first. If you find this video helpful, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos. So how can gastroesophageal reflux disease symptoms be managed? First, let us address lifestyle factors. Lifestyle changes are powerful tools which we can use to help us naturally ease symptoms of acid reflux. Around half of patients can effectively control their reflux symptoms with lifestyle changes alone. Not bad, eh? We've discussed in our previous video the negative effects of carrying too much weight on your reflux symptoms. The additional weight increases the pressure on your stomach and reduces the efficiency of the gastroesophageal sphincter increasing your risk of acid reflux. Getting to a healthy body weight can make all the difference in your symptoms. This is best achieved through diet and regular exercise. This combination has the additional benefit of improving your mental well-being, reduces your risk of heart attacks, strokes and cancers. And that's no bad thing. So what about diet? I can't stress enough how important your meal routine is. Small and frequent meals are best. You must make sure that you sit upright during meals and avoid bending over, heavy lifting or lying flat after meals. These techniques all help reduce the strain on your stomach. If you're experiencing your reflux symptoms at night, you must avoid late night meals and finish your evening meal at least three to four hours before going to bed. Propping up the head end of the bed with foam wedges or additional pillows allows gravity to keep stomach acid in the stomach. Wedges can be purchased online and I'll include a link where you can purchase these in the notes below. I also recommend that you keep a food diary as this will help you identify any food triggers. Also, recording the frequency of your symptoms can help your doctor tailor your treatment plan. Why not comment down below which foods are the worst triggers for your acid reflux? Some of the more common triggers people report and are best avoided are spicy or fatty foods such as curries or pizzas. Foods which are high in fat take longer to digest in the stomach and so stay there for longer. The longer the food remains in your stomach, the more likely you are to experience reflux symptoms. Smoking and alcohol can both reduce the strength of the muscular ring at the base of your gullet, increasing the reflux symptoms. Alcohol also has a direct effect on the lining of your gullet, increasing the susceptibility to stomach acids. Smoking reduces the production of the natural alkaline saliva, which would normally help to neutralize any reflux to stomach acid. So where possible, reducing your alcohol intake and cutting down your smoking can provide a great deal of benefit. Maintaining your mental health is also a crucial factor. You may find that during stressful or emotional periods, your symptoms can worsen. Therefore, it's important to avoid these precipitating factors where possible. So what about medications? For some, lifestyle changes alone are not enough and may not provide the immediate relief that you require. Thankfully, several medications are available over the counter and you may have already tried some of these. Available without prescriptions are usually antacids or alginates. Antacids, available as chewable tablets or liquids, work by neutralizing the acidity of your stomach contents. Alginates, on the other hand, help provide the protective coating your gullet and stomach needs, stopping stomach acids from irritating their lining. Available from your doctor, proton pump inhibitors such as lanzoprazole or H2 antagonists such as ranitidine act within the lining of the stomach, reducing acid production. Proton pump inhibitors are usually more effective and are safe to use. Therefore, they're recommended for first-line treatment. Most patients will notice a drastic improvement with their symptoms with effective medical management. So it's important to speak to your doctor about this. 
So if you're one of the few where lifestyle changes plus medications have been unsuccessful in managing your symptoms, you may require the input from an upper GI surgeon. Surgeons can offer procedures such as Nissen film duplication, where the top of the stomach is wrapped around the lower part of your gullet. This helps reduce any hiatus hernias and improve your symptoms of reflux. So what about my prognosis? Many patients can achieve adequate relief from their gastroesophageal reflux disease through a combination of lifestyle changes and medication. Only a very small minority will ever require any surgical treatment. You need to be aware that if your GERD remains uncontrolled, you are at increased risks of complications. In some patients, persistent acid attacking the lining of the gut can cause precancerous changes in the cells. This is called Barrett's esophagus. While left untreated, this can even lead to cancer. Other complications include ulceration of the esophagus or even a narrowing called a stricture, making it more difficult to swallow. Acid reflux can also worsen your symptoms of asthma or even cause inflammation at the back of the throat, resulting in hoarseness of your voice. So I hope you've enjoyed this video reviewing the management of gastroesophageal reflux disease and the associated acid reflux symptoms. If you've already made lifestyle changes, well done, keep them up. Make sure you're also working with your doctor to find a treatment plan that works well for you. Don't forget to subscribe and interact with us by giving us a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below, especially if you found this information useful. By doing this, you help support the growth of our channel and our mission to help educate as many people about their medical conditions as possible and hopefully improve your quality of life. This video does not provide any individual medical advice and is intended for information purposes only. Do not consider this as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Don't ignore professional medical advice in seeking treatment because of something you've heard here. If you believe you may have a medical emergency, immediately call your doctor or ambulance service. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.